Whenever possible, it's a good idea to import front, side, and top views of a model into Maya to use as reference material so that we can easily trace shapes and maintain correct proportions as we develop a model. Eyeballing the proportions using only a perspective drawing is certainly possible, but images drawn or photographed in perspective can appear distorted depending on the camera focal length or perspective choices of the artist. So orthographic concept art is a more reliable option. To import a reference image into Maya, just select the appropriate orthographic camera and choose View, Image Plane, Import Image. Then select the appropriate reference image and choose Open. If you're creating your own reference images, you'll want to make sure that the image dimensions of all your reference images are the same and that the drawings within the images have the correct relative scale and proportions. I'll import additional reference drawings from my top and side views as well by once again choosing View, Image Plane, Import Image, and selecting the appropriate images. If you need to adjust the placement of the image, you can do this by modifying one of the image center attributes in the channel box. Remember, the channel box displays information about the selected object and is useful for posing and adjusting characters and props. The position of the image plane can be changed by either entering a new number next to the image center X, Y, or Z attribute using the keypad, or by selecting the attribute name, then middle mouse dragging horizontally within one of the viewport windows to modify the value. I'll move all of my image planes up about 4.75 units in the Y axis so that the finished model will sit neatly on the ground plane. The reference planes can be hidden from view at any time by going to the Active Camera's Show menu and unchecking visibility for image planes. You can see that the Show menu allows us to hide and show objects by type, which can be very helpful once you start working more with cameras, lights, and 3D characters. Once the reference planes have been imported and positioned correctly, we can begin creating the model. Ordinarily, we'd begin modeling the large masses first, but this arcade cabinet includes quite a few very basic primitive shapes like spheres and cylinders, which are especially easy to create, so we'll start by tackling those. The joystick, for example, is just a cylinder with a sphere on top. So I'll begin by creating a cylinder, either by clicking on the cylinder icon in the polygon shelf, or by choosing Create Polygon Primitives Cylinder from the main menu. I'll size and position the cylinder based on the reference image, switching between views as needed by tapping on the spacebar, and using the Translate, Rotate, and Scale tools to place the cylinder in the correct position. I'll scale the stick down to an appropriate radius and scale along the object's y-axis to adjust the height of the stick. I'll use the same process to create the joystick knob, this time creating a sphere, again from either the polygon's shelf menu or the Create Primitives main menu. From the side view, I'll translate the knob into position, then rotate and scale it to match the reference image. Since these are smaller pieces, we need to avoid building them with too much detail. Remember, we're aiming for under 3,000 triangles for this entire model, and this small component is already using more than a quarter of our poly count. So let's reduce the poly count by editing some of the values in the channel box. With the sphere selected, look for the polysphere settings within the input section. You'll see values that you can edit to adjust the sphere's radius and subdivisions. Once again, we can modify these values by entering numbers with the keypad, or by selecting the attribute name then middle mouse dragging horizontally to scrub through values. If you ever need to undo a command, just press the Z key and use Shift Z to redo a command. I'm assuming that the joystick will probably be seen more from the front and sides than the top, so I'll reduce the axis subdivisions quite a bit, down to around 6, and the height subdivisions a little less, down to around 8. More subdivisions will make the sphere's silhouette appear smoother, and fewer subdivisions give the geometry a more faceted, less realistic appearance. I'll edit the number of subdivisions for the joystick cylinder in the same way by selecting the object and modifying the attributes in the inputs of the object's construction history. You'll notice that the cylinder has additional attributes that could be modified here in the channel box, for example, the radius and height values. But since I've already scaled this object non-proportionally, I don't need to adjust these values. We'll add some additional components in the next lesson.